Hi there, and welcome to this demonstration on how to use the tree view in a Microsoft Access database. The tree view is part of the Microsoft Common Control Library. Now before I start, I'm going to quickly show you what information I'm going to be loading into the tree view. Now in this example, I want to load in a requirement specification document. For this example, I have simply prepared a small requirement specification for a drink vending machine. It has a few chapters, chapter 1 and chapter 2, and chapter 2.1, coffee. The drink vending machine shall have these following requirements that it must be able to fulfill. As you can see, there is a sort of a structure to this document, and I'm going to recreate the same structure within my tree view. You can see the tree view here. As it's going to look once I'm done, I've even taken the liberty of formatting a few of the nodes to represent headers. So now I'm going to show you how this is all done. First I'll show you the table that is currently storing the requirements. You can see them here. It has a text part, that's the text part you just saw in the Excel document. It has a type specifying whether it's a document, a header, a requirement or a guide. As you can see, number one, type one, this is the document. It has a header introduction and a header technical requirements and later a subheader coffee and a subheader tea. The parent over here is a link directly back to the same table. Introduction and technical requirements are both related to parent one, that is the document which has the primary key of 1. Furthermore, there's a sort column specifying which order the different requirements shall arrive in, or shall be shown in. I'll get back to the sort column a bit later, especially when I get around to creating new rows in my table. So, back to the tree view. I'm going to start right over by selecting my tree view, deleting it, so I'll be starting from scratch. I take and insert a tree view. It's an ActiveX control. Scroll down to Microsoft. And there it is. Microsoft Tree View Control 6.0. You can see it here. Just going to move it, resize it. Finally, selecting the properties and renaming it to Tree Requirements. R-A-Q-S, short for requirements. Let's have a look at the code required to load our nodes into the tree view. I'm going to click the view code, and this takes me into the model module. Another way would be to take my form, select its properties, and look at the load event, since this is the event I'm going to start using. So when the form loads, I also want my tree view to load the nodes. Call load tree view. Now load tree view it's a procedure I haven't written yet. I'm going to insert this in a separate module, public sub load tree view. And this is where I start loading the tree view. First, I need a reference to the tree view. Dip TV as Microsoft Common Control Library dot tree view. You don't actually need the this part, the Microsoft Common Control Library. You could just write tree view but for some reason I always prefer to type it out. Set tree view equal form underscore tree view underscore example. So this is my form. I need to get a hold of it like this. In this form I had a control called tree view underscore reqs. So this is the control that is storing the ActiveX object. I need to get the object inside the control, and thus I add this dot object to the end. I now have a reference to my tree view. I'm going to start off by clearing any previous nodes from my tree view. So, so far so good, I now have a blank empty tree view. I need to be able to load my record into it, so first I need to get hold of my records. Dim RS requirements as thou record set set rs requirements equal current db open record set select everything from tbl requirements order 
by id parent and then sort and specifying the type so I want to start by adding the documents. They should be the topmost node I get to see. So first I have to find my documents. My documents are the one that has a type of one. So record set requirements, find first, string find. So do while record set requirements dot no match. Of course do while not. So as long as I keep finding matches, I want to search my, continue working on my record set. So at the bottom of this, I add a find next and use the same string find criteria. So if I have more than one document, this loop will continue to process the next document. Dim string, sorry, dim node x as Microsoft common control library dot node. So this is my node. Set node x equal tree view dot nodes is the collection of nodes to which I add this node. There's a relative part and relationship part. I'll get back to that in a bit. Skip directly to the key. I'll actually skip this as well for this point. The text I want to show that is from the RS requirements and that field I want to display is called mem underscore requirement, the memo indicating it's a memo type field. I'll also get back to the image part later. So this starts by adding my documents to the tree view. Let's try loading the form and see what happens. Uh, sh short, small typo. Just compile it. Let's try loading the form. It's in break mode. As you can see, my document was loaded. The drink venting machine, that was a document. Now I need to start adding all children requirements, children headers in order. So add children. Now I haven't written this yet, so I'll also have to write that part. Private sub add children. Now I need to get the tree view so I can know which tree view to add children to. I need to get the node. Now I write, I write node parent because this is the parent node that I want to add the children to. I need to get the record set so I have something to work with. And finally I need the ID of the parent. There we go. Okay. And of course I also need to add this up here. So the node X is what becomes the parent of the add children procedure. And the parent ID that I get from the requirements, primary key underscore requirement. There we go. So now I need to add the children. I'm going to add a new string find. This time I want to add all the children that has the value of id parent equal to the parent I just was working with. Again, do search for the first match, find first, string find, and then a loop, do while not, rs requirements dot no match, loop. Once again at the bottom, RS requirements dot find next string find. Now since I started by opening my record set, ordering by the ID parent, and then the DBL sort, this should be fairly fast because the requirements will come in the correct order and the sorting has already been taken care of. Now I need to add nodes again dip node x as node, set node x, tree view, nodes, add, and this is where the relative and relationship part come in. Now for the node x I'm about to add, 
it has a relative that is the parent node and the relationship is that this current um, the node I'm about to add is a child so I use the TVW child constant again I'm going to skip the key but I will get back to this later RS requirements again make underscore requirement and I need to recursively call the add children so any more children can be added like so. This compiles just fine. Finally, there's one th more thing I need to do, because we're going back and forth in the same record set, and I'm constantly using the requirement find next. I need the order to be preserved, so what I'm going to do is create a string and store the current location of the record set in this string. I can use the bookmark property of the record set. Now I've stored the bookmark into the string and I now return the record set to the location it had before running the add children procedure. I'm going to do the exact same up here. Compile it and close the form, save it and reload it. Let's see. Yes, the requirements were loaded just like they were meant to. So now, how do I get the plus sign to show up here? I can do that by switching into Design View, clicking my Control. And up here, you can see the properties of the ActiveX control. There's also properties down here at the bottom, but that's the properties of the control, which is the container of the ActiveX object. And the ActiveX object up here, that's the properties I want to access. The line style, I'll switch it to TVW root lines. Click off this, hide selection, set single selection to true, so I'll only be able to select one node at a time and click apply. As I look now you can see that even my first node has a plus and minus sign. This is a matter of taste whether or not you want to have this. So now I want all my headers to be bold. I'll go and look at that. So after adding my node I want to do a select statement. Now I'll just do if no, I will do a select statement. Select case RS requirements ID type and select. Case 1, that's the document. Now since we've already added the documents up here, the document should never occur down here. I'm just listing it so people don't wonder where it went. Case 2, that was the header. So node x dot bold equal true. Case 3, that was the requirement. Now I'm just going to have that as normal text. Case 4, that was the guide text. I'll get back to what a guide is and how it works in the requirement specification. For now, just be satisfied that it is something that is different from the requirement and thus I want to show it by changing the for color of, that's the text color of my node. I'll just set it to VB blue for now. Finally up here, since all of these are documents, I also want them to be bold. Nodex.bold equal true. Now I could reload this forum to get the tree view to load. I could also just run the load tree view procedure directly from here. As I switch back to my forum, you can now see it has been reloaded and all the header nodes have been bolded the requirement nodes are in back to normal, and you can see the guide that I had up here under introduction. The guide is not a requirement, it is just 
helping text. And you can see the guide is blue, just like I wanted it to be. One final modification I will make in this demonstration is switching to Design View into the Properties and change this indentation value. I'm going to set it to 200 instead of the 500 it was. You can now see the spacing between each node, the indent has been significantly decreased. I like this mode better, it has more space. You can also see that some of these text parts go quite far out. You can solve this to some degree by switching back into the information and here simply say I only want the first let's say 30 characters of the requirement to show in the tree view. In a later demonstration I will show you how you can use the tree view to navigate to the specified record. And of course, as we navigate to the record, we can see the full text directly in the record. Let's just load our tree view and see how it works. You can now see this is cut off at 30 characters. Perhaps for this tree view, 30 characters was a bit small. I'll just change it to 50 instead. Load my tree view. Now this seems to be quite fitting for the amount of space that is available. Thank you for watching this. There will be more coming.